Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got new bikes from Pinarello, plus Factor 2. Also, your upgrades, the Bike Vault, and much, much more. As well as our main talking point, what can cycling learn from Formula One? What's hot in tech this week then? Well, first up, Pinarello have launched two new bikes. First up, an aero cyclocross bike called the Crossista and an aero gravel bike called the Greville. Yeah. I think my Italian pronunciations oh, are quite good, aren't they? Yeah. Not as good as yours and Chris Opie's last week, I must say. You sound pretty, <laughs> pretty good to me. Thanks, man, thanks. Yeah, slightly feminine, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. So, uh, well, aerodynamics isn't something that you'd traditionally associate with gravel bikes, but Pinarello reckons that it's still really important, even at those lower speeds. And to this end, the Gravel has a number of features, some of which are borrowed from the F10. So you've got aerodynamically shaped tube profiles and a seat post with a, you know flat back shapes to them. You've also got a concave down tube so that you can aerodynamically integrate the bottle into the down tube as well. And then also check out the fork. It's using, well, the curved fork from Pinarello, which is pretty much their signature fork now, isn't it? Which, when it was first launched, quite a long time ago now, everyone thought that looks really weird and, well, to be honest, not many people liked it, did they? But it's grown on everyone, let's face it. But by using that fork, it is in fact a different fork and you've got an extra five centimeters of rake, which means increased stability off-road, important. Yeah. Yeah, and perhaps one of the most interesting features about the Gravel is the asymmetry within the frame. Now, take a look at the seat stays on this. So asymmetry is not something that's new in bike frame design because a lot of frames use it and, it, and rightly so. The forces developed by the drivetrain because it's on one side are asymmetrical, but this bike, I mean, it takes it to a whole new level. Look how sort of staggered it is at the back. It's, well, it's quite incredible. Yeah, it almost looks lopsided, doesn't it? So what about the uh, Crossista then? Well, Pinarello, again, they've sought aerodynamic gains from a cyclocross bike here. Yeah, the thing is, is cyclocross races, they tend to average sort of 16 to 30 kilometers an hour. And it might come as a surprise to some people, but aerodynamics is still hugely significant at those speeds, so it makes sense to try and improve that area of a bike as designs evolve. Um, but the Crossista also has a much more race-orientated, aggressive geometry than the Gravel as well. It's longer and lower at the front. Just what we like. Uh, now, the top tube on this bike also has an asymmetrical uh, platform or cross section too, doesn't it? Mm. So designed to actually help shouldering the bike on your right shoulder in particular, slightly more comfortable. And just like the Gravel, it's got 42 millimeter tire clearance. You've also got flex tubes for a little bit of compliance. Uh, you've also got internal cables, removal front derailleur main, all those things. Yeah, nice looking bikes. Mm. But the thing I'm most excited about is the prospect of watching some Team Skyriders perhaps do some cyclocross racing on the Cross Sister. Yeah, Chris Froome, possibly, who knows? <laughs> good, <wouldn't> it? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> anyway, more tech later. It's now time for our weekly talking point. Now this weekend I was watching the US Grand Prix and this got me thinking, what can cycling learn from Formula One? Well, cycling's already learned quite a bit, hasn't it? If you think about the aerodynamics that we've sort of integrated from learning things from Formula One, as well as the use of carbon fibre. Yeah, and well, you know, aerodynamic experts have moved from Formula One into cycling. For example, Jean-Paul Ballard, formerly of Sauber, now of Swiss side, and also Simon Smart, formerly of Red Bull Racing, and has then also worked on Scott bikes, Envy wheels, and Endura's skin suits. Yeah, but that's not all. What about that epic grid start at the stage 17, actually, of this year's Tour de France? Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's probably best we don't ever talk of that ever again. No. We would love to see cycling grow as a spectator sport. And at the moment, cycling is, well, mainly participant-led. And by that, we mean that most of the people, or a large proportion of the people that watch and follow cycle racing actually ride road bikes themselves. Whereas if you compare this to something like Formula One, very few Formula One fans have ever driven a Formula One car. <laughs> now, not everything in Formula One can be transformed over into the cycling world, but a few things can, including cameras. Yeah, I mean, how awesome, right, would coverage of cycling be if every single rider 
had a camera fitted to their bike. So cool. Yeah, and how awesome would it be if those cameras could be live streamed during the race and you could pick which one you watched? And how even more awesome would it be if with that footage you could see real time power, speed and sort of heart rate data and things like that to do with each one of those riders? Yeah, but no doubt some riders out there would complain because of the additional weight or the loss of aerodynamics. But if everyone has to have it, then well, everyone is in the same ballpark, aren't they? No one can complain. Uh, but what we want to know is what do you think? What can cycling learn from Formula One or other sports to make it more spectator friendly? Or is there any technology we can get from other sports out there? There must be some, mustn't there? Yeah, if there are any other sports out there that are light years ahead of cycling in tech, we want to know what you think or if you have any ideas in the comments below. So get involved. See you down there. Now it's the time of the year where here in the Northern Hemisphere we begin thinking about the dreaded indoor training. But, well, in recent years, it's been totally transformed, hasn't it? Yeah. And that's due to the invention of indoor training platforms such as Zwift, which personally I'm a big fan of, where you can actually train, ride, or even race alongside other people from all over the world in this kind of virtual world that you're in. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Zwift. Now, the team at Zwift have just created a whole new world. Oh, I, I went on that ride at Euro Disney once. <laughs> no, don't worry, tell you that. They've brought out New York, but hang on a minute, that doesn't look like New York. No, apparently this is New York's Central Park in a hundred years' time. So you've got transparent roads, flying cars, uh, big crazy buildings, all those things. But also, to keep it more in line with modern day and the real world, if you like, there's also some of the traditional features there too. Including, you've also got 10 different routes you can ride. So something for sprinters, something for climbers, and everything in between. Yeah. I like it actually, the ability to ride somewhere where you know what it's like, but you're doing it indoors, not getting cold. Yeah, I look forward to riding it. Yeah, me too. Now, urbanised bikes have launched what they've dubbed the ultimate urban bicycle. Big old claim that, isn't it? Now, apparently, it only needs a little bit of servicing once a year, which is a drop of lube on the roller brakes. So that's not bad, is it? Yeah, what about lube in the chain? Ah, it's got a carbon belt drive system. So longer lasting and, well, relatively maintenance free too. Nice, practical. And um, tyres? Uh, they're solid, actually, so they're not going to puncture. They're from Tannis, so there is a little bit of give in them, but, well, you're not going to puncture, which is always a bonus right Riding around town. Yeah, it's good. The objective is maintenance free. And also, I see um, you've got internal uh, hub gears as well, so it kind of yeah. finishes off the package nicely. Yeah. Or even nicer to finish it off is that internal grab handle thing down there near the bottom bracket. So, ideal for lifting up the bike and putting away in your favourite storage solution. Nice. Something far, far away from the urban jungle now is this, the new Factor Vista. Now, Factor is a brand that's previously focused solely on high-performance road bikes, and the Vista is their first effort at a gravel, or well, all-road machine. Yeah, now instantly you're gonna notice that external steerer tube design on the front of the bike, which is being taken over from the Factor One road bike that we see. Uh, and then mounted onto that is integrated bar and stem. And the drops of the handlebars are actually flared out slightly, which is a very popular choice, isn't it? With those off-road or all-road riders. Yeah. Uh, now interestingly, with this, you don't have to worry if your steerer tube was really, really short, which it would be in this case, obviously the way it's been designed, because you can still raise your stem by using a really clever internal uh, spacer system. So no need to worry about that going forward. It's future-proof. Yeah, it's all cool. different sizes. Yeah, and it's got lots of other features that you'd expect from an all-road bike. So you've got extra compliance built into those really slender seat stays as well, and uh, a removable front mech hanger in case you want to run one by or two by setup so you can have it all looking neat. And there's clearance for 35 millimeter tires as well. But to see more information and see the bike being ridden in action, then you can actually check out Lloydie's excellent first look video, which is currently up now on the Tech Channel. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit the upgrades that you've made to your bike using the uploader in the description below for a chance to win a coveted GCN apron slash cape capron, like the one we have here. <laughs> so before we get on to this week's entries, I think we need to see 
last week's results. Yeah, we do, in fact, because it was between uh, two drop bar conversions, wasn't it? And the winner with 61% of the views was Felix and that beautiful Persia. I do oh, like that. I like that Persia. Yeah. Now get in touch with us on Facebook to arrange delivery of that. <sighs> right, this week then, mate, who have we got? Uh, well, first up, we've got Justin from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, Justin purchased this 2002 Trek 1000 from the local bike shop collective for just $150 and used it to ride upgrades. I <laughs> see we did that. Yeah. Uh, after 500 miles of riding upgrades, it became clear to Justin that the 16-year-old entry-level parts weren't going to last much longer, and that upgrades would be required if Justin wanted to keep riding upgrades. <laughs> God, Justin. <laughs> Justin made an effort to balance quality, comfort, and price while selecting new parts, and this the new, R, the new 100 R7000 was a perfect fit for Justin's needs. New wheels, tyres, carbon forks, pedals, saddle, and of course new bar tape completed it. Justin spent less than $1,000 on the upgrades, and Justin's comfort and performance have both been greatly improved, as has Justin's riding upgrades. I'll tell you what, Justin, he's a bit of a pun meister there, isn't he? Um, now Justin, that's a nice looking, that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, for a start, smart. the bars, they were dangerous before. It looks great. Not too sure on the big chain ring and big sprocket, but this isn't the bike vault, so we're, you know. Yeah, I do, like, I do like, though, just little things, right? Like yeah. the fact that he's now got a saddle and bar tape that matches. Yeah. Simple upgrade, that, but yeah. an effective one. Nonetheless, right. This bike is up against Nico from Bulgaria. Now, a while back, Nico traded their old MTB for this retro German-built Globus 2000 touring stroke road bike. It was in a bit of a sorry state, but Nico decided to turn it into a cheap little city runaround bike. Nico binned the rack and mud guards and the horrible rubber grips and put on a new chain. He found some Mavic 700C wheels, fitted them with a pair of 32mm wide tyres and binned the old 27 by one and a quarters. Nico replaced the suicide levers with more up-to-date brake levers, <laughs> got rid of the cotter-pin cranks and put on a 46 tooth chain set in instead, removed all the decals and cleaned the frame as much as possible. Finally, Nico fitted some up-to-date Tetro dual pivots that fit the overall black-grey scheme of the bike. Mwah. Isn't that nice, what Nico from Bulgaria oh, has done? That bike is looks mega. good, doesn't it? That is mega. The bike looks really good. I mean, it's still got a bit of a clunky old saddle on it, but comfort is key. So, yeah. but who's it going to be, Justin or Nico? Not for us to decide, is it? I mean, we would. I'd love to be able to decide. It. Although I don't, because I feel too guilty. Yeah, I do. I always worry no, about upsetting great. people. They're both great. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not an upsetting. I kind love of the. Guy. I love the submissions we get. Yeah, this. they're absolutely brilliant. brilliant. So please, 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 just submit them. Even if you bought yourself, I don't know, a turbo train. Remember that guy a few weeks back who kicked his kid out of the room <laughs> and he turned, like, turned it into a into a, a workshop. I thought that was great. If I had kids, that would happen to you. Uh, but anyway, who's it going to be? Vote up there, top right hand corner. Next week we'll reveal the results. Bike of the week time now. Yeah, but first up we need to announce last week's winner because, well, it was a championship clash, wasn't it? We had the world champs bike of uh, Alejandro Valverde, nearly forgot who it was then, and his Canyon Ultimate CF SLX. And that was up against the European Cyclocross champion of Matthew van der Poel. Two and, one. Yeah. Uh, the winner with 53% of the votes, Alejandro Valverde. It was pretty was, close. Yeah, it was pretty close. I'm surprised he got it, but yeah, there we are. Yeah. Right, who's up this week there, mate? Well, this week we have got the Factor One aero bike of Sylvain Dillier. Second in Paris-Roubaix this year. Yeah, uh, it's got Mavic Cosmic wheels on it, mm -hmm. Jura Ace and Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheel system on the back. It's a pretty yeah. bling. Nice looking bike. That is going up against the custom painted Scott foil disc oh. of European champion Matteo Trentin. Now it's got full Jura Ace on it and pretty pro right? white bar tape, look at that. Yeah, that is nice. I do love white bar. I'll tell you what, have a look at those bottles in Didier's bike. Yeah. Brown bottles. Yeah, they're not brown, mate. They're clear bottles. He's just got them full of chocolate milkshake. Oh, right, or coffee, you know. A load of espressos, <laughs> crumbs, imagine that. Anyway, who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be the Factor? Is it gonna be the Scott? Where are they gonna vote? Up there, of course. Let us know. 
Right, time for the bike vault where we rate your bikes either nice or super nice. But Ollie, tell them, how do they get in the bike vault? Well, you have to submit your bike using the uploader in the description below, and then um, if, if it's super nice, it gets to go in and, and John rings the bell. No, I don't ring the bell because I don't like the bell. Anyway, where is the bell? Oh, right. Why don't you go on? Demonstrate how to ring the bell. Do you want me to do it again? Do you want me to do it two weeks ago? I'm ringing the bell! Right, there we are. I think the viewers have just about recovered from last time, but I do get excited to ring my bell. Right. First up this week, we have got Robert from Geelong Waterfront. I do like Geelong Waterfront, so if the invite is still open, Robert, we'd love to come out and stay. Right, anyway, this is Robert's Octane One Frame, Hope Brakes and Hubs with Pro Finishing Kit. Oliver Bridgewood, what do you reckon? Nice, uh, super nice. What? Hang on a minute, what is that on the back of the I, saddle? I know, that's what that. It seems to be some kind of like in a tube just floating in space underneath his saddle, which I just don't understand. Hey, Robert from Geelong, how have you managed to do that? As much as I do love all like, the details and things like that, you know when you have an external cables, and they, mm. just, they do stand out quite a bit on that bike, don't they? Yeah. yeah. But he's chosen to sort of celebrate them, he like, has, rather yeah. than sort of, yeah. you know. So I, I think it's kind of, kind of cool. Yeah, I think actually it is cool because Trying to actually get parts that all match is not particularly easy, is it? No. When you go for colours. Um, what do you reckon? I mean, it I think could affect uh, our invite out there to stay with Robert. Yeah, I think uh, that's definitely a super nice. Yeah, uh, Robert, yeah. I'm going to ring the bell, but also let us know in the comments section down below what you did to get that inner tube to hover like that. Clever, <laughs> clever photoshopping, or I don't know. Anyway, you're going to get a ring of my bell this week. Right. Who next we got next, up, mate? Next up, we've got Kevin Granville from France. I think he's Kevin from Granville in France. Oh, right. Yeah. I prefer. I like to think he's called Kevin Granville. Kevin Granville. <laughs> right. All right, what bike is it, mate? That's the Look 695, and he's got oh. SRAM Red e tap on it, and also some Roval CLX 60 wheels, and a uh, Pro Logo saddle as well. That's a gorgeous looking bike, that is isn't it? Tidy looking. That bike. is really nice. And I, is that a custom paint job? I've not seen that. Um, I don't think it is, but Look do a lot of nice paint jobs. I mean, I went to the Look factory recently, yeah. and I mean, oh, just seeing how those bikes sort of put together and assembled, I've just got a bit of a soft spot for their frames now, yeah. so. Anyway, you're getting all emotional there. Um, yeah. I think that's really nice. Pont du Roi. That's, that's a super nice for me, I think. Yeah, yeah, super nice for me. Do you want to ring it? Or? No, you, you All right, great. <laughs> Right, uh, next up is Michael, uh, and Michael's got himself a giant MCR. Now, Wowzers. wow, indeed. Yeah, I mean, this is Formula One style, isn't it's it? Or, in the future, that one. Yeah, now these MCRs, I remember them being released. Uh, Mike Burrows, the guy behind the, well, basically the compact frame sets of Giant that were launched way back in the mid 90s, the Lotus 108 bike of Chris Boardman. Mike Burrows is a real innovator in the world of cycling. This is one of his designs. Uh, produced, they weren't very long out. A mate of mine had one of these. Yeah. I'll, never, I'll never forget riding with him on it. It just blew my mind away. Anyway, it's it still looks wild and wacky, doesn't it, to this day? Yeah. Do you know what though, right? Big old cable loop on the back there, isn't it? Do you know, I mean, we spoke about weird kind of frames on last week's show, and while I'm all for innovation and stuff like that, I just don't like the look of that bike, I'm sorry. Oh, you've upset Michael. Yeah, sorry, I just don't like the look of well, it. Well, it has to be a majority. I really like it, but it has to be a majority. I'm really sorry, it's a nice bike. Yeah. Personally, I think it's super nice. He thinks it's nice, but, well, it's one all on that, isn't it? Uh, right, next up, Sebastian from Oldham in the UK. Sebastian, bit of a cross, cross fan. Two specialized cruxes. Uh, yeah, nice looking bikes, aren't they, those? I like the colours. Yeah, yeah, you can't go wrong. Matching, near enough. Saddles matching, probably. Difficult to tell at this angle. Yeah, yeah. nice, those, yeah. Personally, I think- How come he's got two? Well, you have a spare bike for cross, don't you? I think this was, I think he said it was before the uh, military or the army championships of cross. Right. Can't remember, anyway. I would have liked them to have been taken in a slightly more picturesque view than a locker room, but, <laughs> But there's a fair few numbers there, isn't there? It looks like to me that's the Knotts and Derby Cyclocross League numbers in the background, sponsored by SRAM. Yeah, Wessex as well. Yeah, yeah. Wessex, Eastern League, British Cycling, National Champs, National Trophies, all that. He does quite a bit of racing, doesn't he, old Sebastian? 
What do you think though, mate? I personally, I love them, those colors. Yeah, I think, I think match it, it takes a lot to get matching bikes because you normally always sacrifice your spare one, but those look spot on. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. Yeah, super really, nice? Yeah, super, yeah, nice. super nice. nice. All right, who's next, mate? Next we have- Last one, in fact. We have Scott Oxley from San Marcos in Texas, the USA. Another place I'd like to visit. Yeah. Um, and it's got his Ridley Phoenix SL. It's Shimano 105 and 11 speed uh, on there. Whew, big bike that, isn't it? That is a big frame, yeah. That was a 58 or a 60 or something. Big bike is Scott Oxley. Um, interesting artwork in the background. Love thy neighbor. It appears to have a knuckle duster on <laughs> Yeah, it's like, like here's a, a knuckle duster on the hand. It's like son, like, Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I painted that. In, anyway, I'm just being drawn to that. Um, um, I mean, well, that's a nice. I, I used to have a bike like that. I think it's a nice looking bike. That I really like that. Yeah, nice artwork. Is it super nice? Yeah, I would. I mean, per, I would have taken the saddlebag off for the photo. But having said that, it's still a very. We very are harsh, nice aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're. I think you're earring on the side of caution here, aren't yeah. you? And you're gonna say it's nice. Yeah, I think that's I yeah. think it's a nice. Yeah. Nice bike, Scott Oxley. And as ever, submit your photos please using the uploader tool. We get literally thousands coming through and it's fun, isn't it, going through. Yeah, I really like seeing your bikes. Yeah, it's good. So there we are, it's nearly time for the end of the show, but don't worry, we've got heaps more great content coming up. So make sure you have subscribed to the GCN Tech channel and make sure you click that little bell notification. So of course you get alerted each and every time we put up another bit of great content. Yeah, and also for a limited time only, you can get a free GCN Essentials case at the shop uh, when you buy any GCN fan kit bundle. You have to add it in manually though in the cart at the end. But uh, you've only got up until Friday to do this. So, well, it's Thursday today, isn't it? So, yeah. You've, you've basically got 24 hours. Half of you <laughs> will probably miss this deal, but nonetheless, there you go. Press buy. <laughs> and of course, don't forget to, to check out the shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, to actually go over there and buy that. And well, it's goodbye from us, isn't it? And you're off somewhere now, aren't you? Where yeah, you? I've got to go now, actually. I'm going to Taipei Bike Show. Oh, enjoy. Yeah, uh, Send me so the postcard. We'll do. Don't I'll, miss uh, me too much. Well, he's off. Vlog you later. All right, vlog you later. That's the weirdest goodbye ever. Now, remember as well, <laughs> check out another video. Just click right here, where he's gone from. <laughs>